What is going on guys? My name is Brent and I hope you guys are excited because this is part 7 of my tutorial series on how to create the game Super Mario Brothers. So if you remember correctly, in the last tutorial we created our game world using the tiled map editor. And in this game world we had some different layers. The first layer was like a background, and then we had the graphics layer. And then we made a bunch of object layers uh, that we drew polygon or rectangle uh, objects around our game world to... Uh, and I told you this was going to be for uh, collision detection. In this tutorial, we're going to be using Box2D to locate those rectangles and uh, put them in a physics world so Mario can actually collide with them. So before we get started with coding, let's talk a little bit about Box2D. Now the main thing in with Box2D is a Box2D world. And you can think of that as a box that surrounds our game world and that everything inside of it is uh, affected by physics. So let's uh, go ahead and type world here. Inside of a game world or a Box2D world, there's things called bodies. And bodies have attributes such as mass, velocity, location, angles, angles that the body is uh, currently in, and also things called fixtures. Now fixtures are uh, the physical attributes of uh, bodies or these, you know, things inside of our game world. Bodies themselves don't actually look like anything. They're just basically containers for fixtures and all of these other physical attributes, you know, mass, velocity, and such. So fixtures have um, shape, okay? They have a density. They have uh, friction, how much, uh, you know, friction when touching other objects or other fixtures, rather. Um, and they have restitution. And restitution is a measure, basically, of bounciness for a fixture. So now that you understand uh, some of the components in a box 2D application, let's go ahead and implement those components into code. Um, so inside of our play screen, we'll create a private world world, and then we'll create a private box 2D debug renderer called B2DR. And a debug renderer gives us a graphical representation of our fixtures and bodies inside of our box 2D world. So we can actually see what's going on. Um, and then, so we'll say world down in our constructor equals new world. And the first parameter is a new vector two. And this is for gravity. So we're gonna say zero, zero for now, no gravity at all right now, but we will change that in the future. And the second parameter is, do we want to sleep objects that are at rest and uh, box2d doesn't calculate inside its physics simulation bodies that are at rest um, so it saves some time when it's doing those calculations you can always uh, wake up an object uh, by commanding it to do any you know activity but if it's just setting still it doesn't need to be calculated inside the physics simulation um, and finally we need to say box b2dr dot uh, equals well equals new box 2d debug renderer next we need to add bodies and fixtures to our game world now we're going to do this in the play screen constructor for now but later on in the series when we start creating our classes for individual objects we'll take this out of the constructor in our play screen and put it uh, put the logic to creating these inside their own classes just a little disclaimer so we're going to create some local variables here, first called body def. And before we can create a body, we actually need to define what uh, the body consists of. Um, so that is what this is going to be. We'll call this bdef uh, equals new body def. Next, we'll have a polygon shape um, for our fixture. So polygon shape, and we'll call that shape equals new polygon shape. Next, we'll have a fixture def. Uh, before you can create a fixture, likewise, you need to define that fixture first and then add it to the body. Um, you're adding bodies to the world. Um, and we'll call this f def equals new fixture def. And then we're going to have a body itself um, called body. 
So what we're going to try to do next is to create a body and fixture at every corresponding object in our tiled map uh, layers. So our uh, we had a ground layer, a pipe layer, a coin, and a brick layer. We want to create bodies and fixtures at every one of those objects that we created in our tiled map editor. Now to do that, we're going to use the following code for map object um, object inside map and this is a long one get layers dot get with an index now to get the index we need to look at our tiled um, layers and it starts at zero from the bottom up so zero one two since we're going to get the ground first all the objects in the ground it'll be layer zero one two um, and then get all the objects in that layer and then get by type and this expects a type class so a rectangle map object dot class first let's get the rectangle object itself so we're gonna create a rectangle here called rect and we're gonna set that to um, and we have to typecast this um, rectangle map object our object and dot get rectangle Next, let's define our body def or define our body. So bdef dot type. Now this is, uh, there are three types of bodies that can happen in um, box 2D. And that is body def, uh, body def dot body type dot now there's a dynamic bodies which would be something like a player that is affected by forces gravity it has uh, velocities and all that kind of stuff can move around on the screen there is a static uh, body in static bodies um, don't move uh, you can move them uh, forcefully by programming it but you know they're not affected by any kind of forces or velocities or anything like that and then there's kinematic bodies, and kinematic bodies uh, aren't affected by forces like gravity, but they are, uh, they can be uh, manipulated with velocities. So uh, applying a velocity to it um, will move uh, the kinematic body. So this is uh, good for like pendulums or, you know, um, um, let's see, moving platforms and stuff like that. So this one will be a static body. Next, let's do set the position. So b def dot position dot set, and we are going to set it at rect rect dot get x plus um, rect dot get width divided by two is the uh, x axis, um, and then uh, rect dot get y plus rect dot get height divided by two. So let's add this body to our box 2D world. So we'll say body equals world dot create body with our body def, so b def. Next, let's work on our fixture. First, we need to define the polygon shape itself. So shape, uh, uh, and we're going to say we've already uh, defined our shape as a polygon shape so we can set our shape set as box and it takes in a width and a height so we'll say rect dot get width divided by two because it's it starts in the center and the boxes you know uh, goes both directions and then rect dot get height divided by two and then next we can say f define dot shape equals our shape and then we can add our sh uh, fixture to our body so in order to do that we say body dot create fixture with our uh, fixture definition or f def now that we have the ground taken care of we're just going to go ahead and copy this um, and we're going to take care of the pipe, the brick, and the coins. Now, like I said, um, disclaimer, this will all be taken away from this class and put into their own classes eventually. But for right now, we're just going to do it this way. Uh, so we need to get, everything's going to be the same except for the layer that we're getting for the pipes. And the pipe is 0, 1, 2, 3. So we'll get uh, layer 3 for the pipes. 
Um, next uh, is the bricks. And the bricks is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so we'll get layer 5 for the bricks. And finally, the coins I saw was layer 4. So there we go. Next, let's go ahead and go down to our render method here. And all we have to do is say b2dr dot render, give it our game world and the game cam. So game cam dot combine. It's actually the projection matrix for it. Now hitting the run button here will launch our game. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. Um, but we should see box 2D render lines around all of our objects. And it looks like that is the case. I can see if I, if you get really close here, hopefully you can see this, but there is a green uh, debug line around that coin. Also, there's green debugs around each one of these bricks, the coins and the ground. You can really see the debug line around the pipes because uh, it, it kind of comes out uh, from the outside of the pipe there a little bit. And so, yeah, we've uh, effectively created fixtures and objects inside of our, and fixtures and bodies inside of our Box2D world. And just in case you want a little sneak peek of what's coming up in the next tutorial, check out uh, this new dynamic body that I've created, and it is bouncing on top of our static bodies that, that we just created. That's pretty much it for this tutorial. I understand that Box2D can seem a little daunting and complicated at first, but I promise we're going to go over it more in the future. Uh, but for now, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and post them below. I'm pretty good about getting back to everybody. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe. But most importantly, please share this video if you found it uh, helpful. Uh, if you're feeling generous, check out my Patreon page. I'd give you two big thumbs up for that. I appreciate everybody watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.